okay uh, so uh, uh, in the last lecture uh, we have finished with unit number two so unit number one uh, and now uh, in this lecture uh, we'll start with unit number two okay so uh, this this slide shows uh, the contents of unit number two okay so the unit number two is actually named as a material testing and characterization techniques okay so uh, its a name itself implies that uh, it is something related to materials uh, properties and uh, checking the material properties okay so how to do this thing that will discuss for this uh, unit okay so uh, these are the contents of this uh, particular unit okay uh, there is a destructive testing the first point is okay uh, in that uh, there is impact test then cupping test okay and then hardest test three tests are there and in case of non destructive testing uh, there is a eddy current test or actually all the tests are not included in the syllabus okay few very very few uh, tests are included and we will go through all these tests okay so eddy current test is there then so not necessary to go through uh, सर तुम आवाज ब्रेक हो ओके इज इट ऑडिबल यस सर आता एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर ओके वेट मिनट Okay, am I clearly audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so we'll start again. So uh, in this particular unit, that is unit number two, there are destructive testing, impact test, cupping test, and hardness test. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, there no, are no. non-destructive no. testing, uh, eddy current test, then sonic test, okay, or uh, ultrasonic test, uh, then X-ray radiography, okay. Uh, these tests are included. In principle, and applications of these tests are only included in the syllabus. Okay, uh, in-depth study of these tests are not included. Okay. Uh, next is microscopic techniques. Okay. Next part of this. Next part of this unit is microscopic techniques. Which which Aniket Aniket Gadekar Aniket Gadekar. Okay. Uh, next part of this uh, unit. Aniket, Gadi, can mute your mic. Okay, uh, so uh, next part of the unit is microscopic techniques. Okay, in that there are there is a uh, the contents of the point are sample preparation, then etching procedure. Okay, then optical microscopy, electron microscopy, only uh, scanning electron microscope, tunnel electro uh, transmission electron microscope, and X-ray uh, diffraction techniques. Uh, principle of app and applications of these uh, microscopes. Okay, and last point was uh, last point is a macroscopy. Okay, so in that uh, sulfur printing is there then. Uh, flow line observation is there okay and the spark test is there so we'll go through all these points okay uh, we'll actually uh, this particular uh, unit okay so only microscopic techniques and microscopy these last two points were uh, the actually contents of uh, second unit of metallurgy subject okay purely metallurgy subject so in that it was detailed in this uh, it, it was discussed in uh, detail but now uh, it is not that 
it is not uh, included in up to that extent. So what what we'll uh, try to do is uh, we'll try to complete this as it is given in the uh, syllabus only. So as per the directions, we'll try to uh, discuss and we'll try to understand okay what what it is exactly okay. And uh, I'll tell you that uh, right from unit three okay uh, there will be a proper metallurgical part will be started. So. You should not miss basically uh, the lectures from this particular unit only. Okay, so try to attend all the lectures that will be uh, really helpful for you. So we will start with the first point that is destructive testing. Okay, okay uh, first thing is uh, as it as, as the name of this particular unit uh, implies that uh, material testing. Okay. We, we need to understand why this testing is required, why this testing is done actually. Okay. So uh, basically if you check, okay, in, in, in your even, even if you check in, uh, in some companies, you will find that they are testing their materials regularly. Okay. So basically in order to say manufacture a particular product of a particular material, you need to check the quality of that material. Okay. So, how to check the quality of the material? Obviously, the option uh, remaining with you is the testing of that material. Once you test the material, you will get the properties of the material. Properties, are, properties of that particular material will definitely define the quality of that material. Now, why it is necessary? For example, for a particular application, particular requirements are there. Particular properties requirements are there. So, what you need to do is you need to find out the properties of that particular material and you need to check whether those properties are suitable for that application or no. Okay, then and then only uh, you will be uh, able to use that particular material for a given application. Okay, next thing is once you uh, apply or once you use any particular material for a particular application or for making a particular say component, okay, in that case, when that component is at application uh, site, okay, is at application site, when it is under load, it should not fail. It should not fail. Definitely, material component are going to fail, but that should exceed its uh, minimum life. Okay, then and then only uh, it, it can fail. Before life, if it is a failing, definitely as a uh, as a you can say as a manufacturer, you will lose your customer until and unless you are not giving a particular. Uh, quality to that particular component, your customer is not going to return back to you, okay, for purchasing the same component uh, when he required that in the uh, maybe in the next application, okay. So for that purpose also, in order to prevent the failure of the component, materials are tested. And last thing is make informed choices in using materials. That means for a particular applications. You will have a number of uh, options. You can see you will have uh, you will have a range of material. Okay, so uh, from that range of material, uh, you need to check which particular material is suitable for that particular application. Uh, when you will come to know that this particular material is uh, uh, suitable for this particular application, when you will come to know about its uh, properties. Then you know it's a properties, you know it's a quality, and when you know it's a quality, you know which particular material is good for this particular application. For example, uh, say if I'm uh, trying to manufacture a, uh, an IC engine, okay, and uh, I feel that okay, plastic is looking good, I will use plastic for IC engine. Obviously, it is not suitable because it is it is not going to give a part that uh, required properties which are actually uh, asked asked in a IC engine function. Okay, so functioning of IC engine you need to understand, and according to that you need to find out what are the requirements of that application. And according to requirements, you need to find finalize the material. And while finalize them finalizing the material, you will have a range of materials. And from that range of material, you will find proper material on the basis of only its uh, properties okay that means only on the basis of only its uh, qualities okay uh, next thing is last point factor of safety okay, uh, see uh, one thing is sure when you are uh, trying to manufacture any particular component say for example i am trying to manufacture uh, a machine Okay, in case if I am trying to manufacture, I need to take care of the safety of that particular equipment, safety of that particular you can say component. 
why safety is necessary because in case in case i say see in case if a, if that particular component fails if that particular component fails it will result into financial losses okay financial losses as well as it may reduce okay it may reduce into loss of any uh, you can say any human being something like that okay because see, operating a machine is not e machine is not that is that much easy task okay so you you should be careful while uh, operating a machine that is one part but second part is machine should be also uh, proper no it, it should have uh, safety things okay it, it should not fail in between while while it is operating okay so these things you need to uh, consider while manufacturing any component first thing and in order to do this what you need to do is you need to test the material now testing that particular material have various option okay you can check that in various uh, manner first thing is there are two types of testing one is destructive testing and second one is a non destructive testing okay destructive testing are the testings in which the material is physically tested and it is a destructed while testing that means you will take a sample uh, piece which is usually called as a specimen you will take the specimen for the test and after the test you will, if you see the specimen you will find that it is a totally destructed it is of no use now. okay that is called as a destructive testing now what usually destructive testing offer is destructive testing give you a specific value of property something like strength say a tensile strength of a particular material say hardness value of a particular material okay in in case of impact is uh, you may have a toughness value okay so you will get these values from the destructive testing okay so there are tens uh, there are various testings in uh, destructive testing type okay uh, tensile test is there hardness test is there toughness test is there in, in some cases grip and fatigue test is also there okay and uh, in case of non destructive testing okay actually specimen is not used in the in the case of non destructive testing your real component is used your finished product is used to test the property okay what i am saying is your final component what is your whatever component that you have manufactured that manufactured component is taken for testing so obviously you have no choice of destructing that component because under the name under the name of say testing if you are going to destruct each and every component obviously there at the end you will have zero in your hand okay so what you need to do is in case of non destructive testing you need to check you need to test okay the actual component but you should not destroy that and in case of non destructive it's a name itself implies that your component is not destructed okay it is not damaged during the testing okay now in in case of non destructive testing there are various tests okay uh, visual inspection is there okay uh, dye penetrant test is there magnetic particle test is there eddy current test is there ultrasonic test is there x-ray test is there okay we'll uh, go through all these tests one by one okay so very first test in a, in under the heading of destructive testing is a tensile testing okay uh, we have studied the properties mechanical properties of material in in uh, last unit okay unit number 1 can anyone tell me what is the meaning of tensile uh, you can say tensile strength of a material the force uh, uh, the force acted outward to from the body outward from the body anything else tensile tensile test uh, sorry tensile uh, strength any other answer tensile strength of a material maximum stress that material can bear it can be a tensile load yes so the resistance of a material uh, for uh, under uh, tension hmm under tension right so uh, at how much load up to how much load that particular material sustain tensile load is nothing but the tensile strength you can say okay before fracture okay so obviously if you are going to increase the load on that particular material definitely after some time it is going to result into fracture only but be, 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 
before fracture how much strength that particular material how much resistance that particular material shows is nothing but the tensile strength okay so obviously if you if you go through the the deformation thing you you, you know that that uh, elastic deformation comes first and then plastic deformation comes after that okay that we'll discuss once again uh, into this particular point itself so we'll see now how how it is done so ten tensile testing uh, uh, usually involves the stretching of a piece of material okay that piece of material is uh, called as a specimen okay specimen of that particular material okay uh, it is usually done uh, by putting that particular specimen under strain okay and examining how how it behaves under that particular load okay that is called as usually tensile test okay we will go through in detail about this particular test okay now the ductility uh, of a metal uh, okay can be found in a tensile testing using extensometer that means the machine which is used to check the tensile test or tensile strength of a particular material is called as a extensometer okay it is instrument you can say you can say it is a machine okay which usually measures the amount of specimen a stretch stretch of specimen okay and how how much it extends when you apply a load on that particular material that is actually checked by that extensometer okay the specimens used in this test can be uh, in a shape of uh, can be uh, of a rectangular shape or can be uh, of a circular shape okay if if it is suppose uh, rectangular shape okay it's a uh, uh, one thing is uh, sure that uh, no doubt you can use rectangular shape or circular shape but it's a cross sectional area should remain same okay in, in both the things okay if you are going to use say rectangular uh, section okay it's a what you can say as the width is usually 13 mm and uh, the thickness of that particular material is 7 mm or or you can use the width up to 19 mm and thickness up to 7 mm okay and if you are going to use a circular shape okay something like a bar like section okay a circular bar like section in that case a diameter you can keep of that uh, circle okay or of that particular bar is 12.5 mm okay uh one thing is the distance okay the or the length of that particular uh, specimen okay apart from the folding things okay its a length is called as usually gauge length i will show its a diagram and you will easily understand how that specimen is so it is called as a gauge length and normally the gauge length is 50 mm okay remember this thing okay so this is how the specimen looks like one minute okay so these are the specimen this one is a rectangular specimen and this is a circular cross section specimen okay this is a bar like structure it's a cross section looks like this okay and this one is a rectangular uh, say specimen okay rectangular shaped specimen and it's a cross section looks like this okay it is called as a flat flat test specimen and this one is called as a round test specimen so this these specimens you need to use in the test first thing uh second thing is uh, these are the uh, holding spaces okay these are the spaces provided for holding and the length of this particular active length of this particular uh, specimen is from this red point to this red point so it is called as a gauge length and this is usually kept as a 50 mm okay you can see over here from this point this red point to this red point this distance is called as a gauge length this is actual active length you can see because this is this green color part is usually used to hold that uh, component in the machine so whatever load that comes will be on this cross section only so whatever uh, comes in picture during test is this length which is called as a gauge length okay so we'll come to the procedure of this test because see uh, this is uh, included in your practical also okay this uh, tensile uh, test the specimen is set up in the tensile testing machine which is called as a extensometer okay so what it is done is one end is held in a vise and the other end is is uh, hold in a holding system okay i will check i have the okay this this type of machine is there okay all of you can see this machine yes sir okay this this type of machine yes, is there so at one end there will be vise okay and at the other end there will be holding system okay so in between this okay you can see over here the specimen is uh, held over here okay here in this section so this is how uh, you need to hold the specimen okay in between these two things one is vise and second one is holding system 
okay so once you hold this specimen in the machine okay what you need to do is a controlled load you need to apply on that particular specimen okay so obviously the load you are going to apply you are going for a tensile test so the load you are going to apply is obviously tensile load in that in that direction only so the amount of obviously what will happen after applying the tensile load i will i will show over here okay for example if you have suppose this is your specimen so this one okay and it is hold it is it is held in say at this point in a holding system and at this point in a you can say in a wise okay and uh, this is say your gauge length from this point to this point okay now how the load is applied in this case is obviously the tensile load should be there something like this what will happen obviously this load will exert okay you can say stress on this Component this active length, this gauge length. Okay, it will. Uh, okay, one minute. Okay, it will. It will create or it will apply load on this particular gauge length. Okay, so what happens after applying this load is. Okay. Definitely, any material will have a certain amount of obviously uh, elasticity so it will after applying the load it will stretch okay now after applying a small load okay the material will stretch in a small manner okay so after that after applying load applying that load what you can do is you can release the load you can come down back to zero what will happen material will come back to its original shape whatever that small stretch that has been taken place okay after applying the load after releasing the load that stretch will be vanished and material will gain its original shape okay the load that you are applying on that material you can go on increasing after a second step also if you release the load it will come back to its uh, original shape now this is hooke's law that you know okay that we have discussed in the unit 1 also okay in the hooke's law within elastic limit stress is directly proportional to strain that means after releasing the load the material will regain its original shape that's it okay but at a certain point which is usually called as a yield point okay at yield point one one uh, value of a load will be there okay uh, above that load what will happen if you apply that load to that particular material what will happen it will result into stretching the material but if you release the load it will not come back to its original shape that means at this point i can say that material has left elastic limit and it has entered into plastic deformation stage that means from here okay from here from this particular point whatever load i will apply that will result into stretching that material stretching that specimen and that stretching will be permanent to that material that specimen okay now it is permanently its shape is permanently changed okay now you go on increasing the load even after this you go on increasing the load so obviously after increasing the load what will happen material will stretch further okay after a certain time okay its a stretching ability will also end okay from that point what will happen from exactly at the center okay exactly at the center okay or you can say plus minus over here and there from that center point that material will start necking matlab what is necking that i will show you i'll, I'll show you uh, i have a diagram of this it will start necking okay okay over here you can see over here shortening of width shortening of width exactly okay Okay, over here this particular diagram you can show it see over here okay see this is this particular shows the curve this this particular diagram shows the curve okay so obviously up to this point okay up to this yield point okay 
over here the proportionality is going to end okay so up to over here stress is go, going to be directly proportional to strain so no need even after releasing it will regain its original shape but above this point what will happen okay whatever shape change that take place after applying the load that will be permanent okay so from this point you can say plastic deformation has started okay but this is this is not yield point okay this is going to be your yield point this will be upper yield point and this will be your lower yield point okay so during this period okay whatever stretch whatever change that occurs in that particular specimen that will be permanent okay if you apply certain load if you if you go on increasing the load okay the plastic deformation will obviously uh, take place during this period and the material will stretch and stretch and stretch okay at this point okay over here okay at this point okay where it's a tensile strength actually comes okay at that point it's a that specimens necking starts okay so at this uh, in this particular uh, diagram you can see your necking is started over here in this point okay so if you exceed this point if you exceed this tensile strength point this necking will go on increasing and after a certain time you will find that that width or you can say the um, whatever that uh, width of that particular component is there or you can say uh, thickness if it is a rectangular shape okay that will go on decreasing and at certain point it will result into fracture at this particular point okay now if it is a ductile material it will result into cup and cone type of fracture now this is going to be ductile material only if it wasn't a ductile material it would have ended in between only this has come up to this particular point that means it is a ductile material it is showing up to at least moderate ductility then and then only this type of structure is usually formed this we have discussed also can anyone tell me where we have discussed this cup and cone type of structure cup and cone type of fracture so when we are seeing that uh, elastic limit or yield point limit uh, in previous unit previous unit where where okay. it was discussed in a fracture okay there are two kinds of fractures one is ductile fracture and second one is brittle fracture this type of shape this cup and cone type of fracture or cup of cup and cone type of shape is usually formed in a ductile fracture remember this thing. okay this type of fracture is usually formed in ductile fracture okay this type of necking okay uh, actually occurs in uh, materials which usually shows at least a moderate ductility if there is no ductility this type of necking will not be there after applying certain load when it exceeds its limit uh, material will directly result into fracture it will not result into this type of necking and then this type of cup and cone fracture this this will be there if that material shows at least a moderate ductility okay clear this particular diagram i will provide you this ppt this ppt is self explanatory okay so sir doubt take huh. sir the uh, lower yield point no uh, the graph madhe ha this one upper yield point and lower yield point sir sir lower yield point uh, pass on till uh, tensile strength parent kay hota sir tith uh, plastic deformation happens during this period also ata plastic deformation manje me plastic deformation hi wide term use korto as far as concerned with this specimen only i can say stretching occurs up to this point manje stretching thambat nahi या पॉइंटला स्ट्रेचिंग थांबत जेव्हा त्याची मटेरियलची ऍबिलिटी संपते स्ट्रेचिंगची तेव्हा ते स्ट्रेचिंग थांबत आणि त्याच्यानंतर त्याचं नेकिंग स्टार्ट होत ओके अँड ऍट दिस पॉइंट इट रिझल्ट इन टू फ्रॅक्चर म्हणजे असं नाही की फक्त इथपर्यंतच प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन होतं जर इथपर्यंत प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन जर होत असेल आणि इथं जर फ्रॅक्चर होत असेल तर इथं मध्ये काय होणार मग असं तर राहू शकत नाही ना की मटेरियल विदाऊट चेंज यू आर अप्लाइंग द लोड अँड देर इज नथिंग इज हॅपनिंग इन बिटवीन असं नाही होऊ शकत so from this upper yield point itself okay even though there is a drop in this uh, you can say in the load okay or you can say in the stress okay still plastic deformation take place during this period from upper yield point to this okay now one thing there is ultimate tensile strength one thing you will you will get this into uh, into design part okay there will be ultimate tensile strength and then there will you have a value of yield point or yield strain okay which one to consider for fracture okay so in the case of 
say designing anything, you need to consider yield strength. Don't go for ultimate tensile strength. Why? Because this will allow from this point to this point, it will allow us a factor of safety, you can say. That means even though your load reaches this yield strength, the material will not immediately fracture. Material will not immediately fail. It will fail after this tensile strength. Okay, so this will be useful. Okay, you will you will understand this as we go on further discussing in this. You will understand this what I'm trying to say. Okay, this is actually yes, uh, a uh, modeled you can say diagram. Okay, these are the specimens. Okay, over here, these are the specimens. This one. So you can see this this one is specimen just uh, held in the machine. This first diagram. Okay, let me take the spotlight okay over here so this particular specimen is just held in the machine so there is a no load start applying the load small load is applied you can see over here the stress okay uh, which is usually occurred in the material or in the specimen this blue color shown over here okay dark blue color if you increase the load okay some more stress will get occurred and that will be concentrated at this center point if you increase the load again, it, you will find uh, some concentrated stress, which is on increase manner. Okay. Next thing again, you will increase the load. It will turn into green. The, hey, ja, hey. This is modeling. Actual testing kartana asa colors wagere ye nahi. Ye lakshat theva. Na itro kote thare exam madhe chukun lehal kaise colors changes hoot zata thoni. Ye fakta tumala samajne sa tithe dile lahi. Okay. So if you go on increasing this blue color ends into red and obviously we know that red is nothing but the danger it is about to fracture at this point you can see necking is started at this point okay over here in the one two three four fifth you can see fifth specimen necking has started over here okay that necking has been increased in the next specimen in the next figure you can see again the necking is increased so it is increased up to up to that point where at certain point it will result into fracture okay aso honar nahi ki he je necking ahe te kute tari 1 mm paryant khali gelo evde necking khali jat nahi tyacha agodaras material kay hota material loses its you can say resistance and it results into fracture so he je red dakhalela ahe that is this is you can say the limit yacha varti it will result into फ्रैक्चर म्हणजे याच्यानंतर जर जे जर डायग्राम मी ड्रॉ केली तर इट विल बी अ फ्रॅक्चर डायग्राम ओके एक इकडचा पीस वेगळा असेल आणि इकडचा पीस वेगळा असेल दॅट काइंड ऑफ थिंग विल बी देयर ओके ऑल ऑफ यू अंडरस्टूड दिस दिस इज टेंसाइल टेस्ट आई विल आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस टेंसाइल टेस्ट वन्स अगेन ड्यूरिंग योर प्रॅक्टिकल सेशन ओके वी वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द प्रॅक्टिकल्स इन दिस वीक ओनली सो आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस वन्स अगेन टेंसाइल टेस्ट इन द प्रॅक्टिकल सेशन ऑल्सो okay and after doing all this test what you can do is you can calculate the tensile strain and in order to calculate the tensile strain uh, you can use this formula okay so tensile strain is a maximum load that you apply okay before fracture and uh, divided by original cross sectional area so which particular specimen that you used okay so what was the cross sectional area okay so that you need to take into consideration so obviously because see jar cross section jar change hota asel ekada material cha so definitely the load carrying capacity of that particular specimen is going to change so obviously it is going to result into tensile strain okay if if you are directly saying that tensile strain is nothing but the maximum load taken by the uh, that particular material obviously it is wrong answer okay you need to take into consideration the area okay on what area on what cross section area okay you have applied the load that is important then and then only you will be able to find out tensile strain not only tensile strain this is this is applicable in in almost every proper every mechanical property okay so this you need to understand conceptually understanding is important see you can by heart this formula at any time okay you can easily tell me now this tensile strain is equal to maximum load divided by original cross sectional area okay but it it doesn't you what you try to do is you try to understand whatever i am teaching you conceptually you try to understand okay then it will be permanent in your uh, brain okay okay uh, what i will do is 
I'll show you one example. Uh, last one minute is there. So I'll show you one small example. See, if I have one section like this, okay, and another section like this, two sections I have, okay, both these are of same, you can say Montreal. Okay, this is say mile stick, and this is also, you can say mile stick. If I do not consider, okay, cross sectional area, if I do not consider cross sectional area in calculation of say tensile strength, what will happen? I will have a result something like this. The tensile strength of this section is more than tensile strength of this section. Why? Because I haven't considered cross sectional area anywhere in the calculation. Okay, but it is not right because if it is a mild steel, tensile strength of this particular specimen and tensile strength of this particular specimen, both these specimens should remain same. Okay, and this is possible only if you use cross sectional area into calculation. Okay, someone take the screenshot of that and okay, send me on WhatsApp. Got it? If, if material is going to remain same, tensile strength is going to remain same. So cross-sectional area need to consider, you need to consider while calculating the tensile strength. So maximum load that was observed divided by cross-sectional area of that species. That will give you the tensile strength. Clear? Okay, we'll stop here. And uh, in this particular uh, week only we'll uh, conduct some practical session as well as